Look at this. The stock market just closed at a new record high. But now that it's here and Jerome Powell and the Fed meet tomorrow, what exactly do we do? Because we're going to be facing our final boss. And for tomorrow, there is a 1% implied move, which means either going down to 532 or back up to 542. We're looking for a big swing. We're going to come back and look at our notes in a moment. But what this really means is that tomorrow we might be sweating bullets or it might be a fantastic day. Up until now, the bulls have had a lot of tests. And this is what's really interesting. If we look at our notes, like I said, we would come back to what happened today. Bullish engulfing daily candle closing at a record high and a record intraday high. Not just for the S&P, but also for the NASDAQ. So what that means is that at least going into our final boss, man, we got some tests. And we got a test for uh, NVIDIA today. Falling back to number three of the most valuable companies. Sorry, NVIDIA. Apple's kicking you over because it's up by 7% today. All right, so if we take a step back, there's been a lot of tests for the bulls. We're closing at a record high, so so far they flexed and they won. There's two times that really matter tomorrow. A30, which is when we're supposed to get a positive reaction to CPI if the numbers come in as expected, and then the Fed decides at 2 o'clock, we get the SEP. That is really important. So what this basically means is that tomorrow at 2 p.m., we're going to find out what's going to happen versus the last meeting. The last time they said there's going to be three cuts in for the year. Now, what's either going to be one or two. So how the market's going to react will be very important. So that time also matters. A30, we're probably going to move before the market opens. Then we're going to hear about the SCP at two. Then the market has 30 minutes to, to digest the move here. So what you want to do right now is ask yourself whether or not we are above yesterday or below yesterday. Please make sure you watch until the end because I will leave you with a key takeaway in terms of levels and, up, and an update here for what we want to do exactly tomorrow. So we're not sweating bullets. We're prepared for what if we're right and what if we're wrong. All right. So there's three times that matter tomorrow. And then as we go into the later part of the week, we got PPI, 30-year bond auction, Fed monetary policy. All right, let's go. So think about this. How could the market go higher? Well, negative news like this, negative news like this. What does it mean? Man, record highs, bullish engulfing candle. What does a bullish engulfing candle mean, though? It means that at one point during the day, we were in a lower low. We were lower than yesterday's range, which means the bears had temporary control. Keyword being temporary. They lost it. Why? Man, bullish engulfing candle. Look over here at Apple on the weekly. Bullish engulfing weekly candle currently at the high. Why is this notable? Looks like NVIDIA. Looks like there's more juice in the tank here. Look at this expansion. Beautiful. Look over here. We haven't even had one hollow, can one full candle yet. Even the red one is hollow. What does this mean? Man, we're expanding. We're blowing up a big balloon, right? Let's go. Let's pop the bubble in like three years. But for now, hey, we're going to party like it's 1995. And we're going to go through that in a moment here because boy, was it a party, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. We're going to come back and talk about this in one second here, but... How can we go higher by hundreds of percent if we don't first start going up massively? And how can we not go higher if the one of the biggest companies in the world is not participating? That's why Apple's move today is so notable. Without Apple, the banks really dragged us down. So did Energy and Tesla. We needed Apple today. We needed our king. We needed our lord. We needed our savior. And right now they're battling out for number one to three. Microsoft's number one at 3.21 trillion. Micro, uh, sorry, Apple with its move today, 3.17. It's within 1% of getting there. NVIDIA is pretty close too, based on how the stock moves, briefly falling back below $3 trillion on this, uh, on this headline here. But anyways, let's continue the story because, man, how the F are we going to go up by 9% this month? Again, we'll get to this a little bit later in the show. But what it basically means is that we're doing this right here. We'll do chart review for the S&P at the very end, but 1995 on the left, 2020 is on the right. All we got to do is keep matching the template. We look at number three and number four. Like, how can we go mega big up, mega big booms? Well, we got to have something that kickstart the rally here. And uh, how much are we up on the month right now? Nah, not that much, right? We're up by a boot, 1.8%. And with a 1% implied move tomorrow, we're looking at about 2.5 to 3% of a total move. Well, that's a third of 9%. Uh, and we're ironically about a third of the way through the month. It's currently June 11th and a month that I believe has 31 days. Let me just double check that so I don't look stupid. 30 days. Hey, it's roughly a third uh, third of the way through the month. All right, so how could we go higher? Man, it's 1995 and people don't believe it. Why? Well, we need big tech. Uh, big tech is driving the S&P rally, but the rest have to participate soon. 
And this really means Apple and NVIDIA are still putting the team on their back and dragging us higher. All right, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor before we go further. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up or subscribing to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. So like I mentioned, we go no group. Sorry, we go to sector. Banks suck today. Ahead of Jerome Powell tomorrow, they're like, man, sell first, ask questions later. And Apple's like, no problem, team. Jump on my back. I'm going to carry you higher. And the bullish engulfing candle is really notable to me. Like I said, yesterday... The bears technically were correct. We were below last week's low at some point during this week. But now, hey, man, bullish and golfing candle. They got roasted. Whatever fear there was, man, it got washed out. We're back here into neutral. So there's nothing really huge here. Everyone knew this going into Apple's event. Here's what I think happened. People have not bought enough Apple. They've been so uh, drunk uh, over with, uh, with NVIDIA. They're like, oh, my God, I forgot that Apple's good. They're a good company. Why? Well, even Warren Buffett sold. Right? He's like, oh, my God, I, I don't know. So let's read this here. Uh, older stuff will be obsolete if you want AI, including all the iPhones bought during uh, the lockdowns. We have a more conviction in our super cycle thesis that there's going to be an upgrade cycle. Well, I, I love everything Apple. I'm not going to be buying the first one with the a AI on there. Why? I don't particularly like chat GBT. I don't want them to have access to my data. And I just don't trust them right now. Just like I didn't want the first phone that had the, uh, the face ID. I didn't like that. I didn't buy the first watch. Couldn't make an ind independent call. I'm definitely going to buy something in a few generations. But for now, Apple has not convinced me on the VR headset and it has not convinced me on um, the new phone with the GPU, which they didn't even say the word. They didn't even say, sorry, NPU. They didn't even say it. They said local storage. Uh, I don't know. But like, again, Apple drove us higher. So I think people just kind of forgot that, oh, I'm underexposed here. I don't think there's anything here other than hype, right? That's what I see. I see hype. Um, but it doesn't really matter. The market is getting hyped up. And if we're going to go into a bubble, right, blowing the big bubble, that's exactly what we need. We need no reaction to bad news. And we need a uh, really good reaction to good news. I'm like, okay, well, should, should Apple be higher? doesn't matter. I was looking to buy Apple. I'm still interested in buying Apple. I have an open order at 183. So what this means is that people are willing to bid it up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And if Apple does slam down, hey, there's people like me who are going to want to buy right on support. All right. I think we're rounding out the show. So let's get to the very last part that I mentioned here. All right. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, yeah. The part that really matters here is the widening out. So if you look at a couple of charts, honestly, I had an issue with the video. It completely crapped out as I was about to finish and sign off. So I'm forgetting what I mentioned and what I didn't. Um, here, RSP looks like a double top. We're not above our previous all-time high. This does look double toppy here. XLF as well. So what does XLF look like? It looks like there's a double top here. So when I look, I'm like, ah, people are selling first, asking questions later. That looks like a perfect slam off our previous top here. So that's a that's a fail for right now. How could the market go up? Uh, we get a reversal of today's move. And then if we look over here to the note from the weekend, something's important here. Let me just get to it in one second. It's US exceptionalism. So we talk, I talked about two themes here. Let's go back up to the top. I talked about broadening out. RSP, XLF, we just looked at those, check, US exceptionalism. Well, looky here, right? We got uh, what's higher on the day? We got uh, S&P, NASDAQ, dollar, VIX, bonds are uh, down. But man, US exceptionalism is prevailing. People don't want the Bitcoin. They don't want the ETH. They want the dollar, right? King dollar. That's what they want today. So where are we going to go? Let's go back to our S&P notes. And now here's what you want to do right now. Thank you for tuning all the way till the end. So we were looking to see if we could just hold the low. Well, we didn't, but then it turned into a bullish engulfing candle. So if we close green tomorrow, here's the important part. If we're green tomorrow, another record close. It doesn't matter how high we close. If we're green, record closing high, that is bullish. However, if we read the note here, if we close below 532 tomorrow, it means we're blowing out the low after a failed breakout, a bearish engulfing daily candle, a daily inside bar bear, which means we really got a lot of volatility. And now we're probably going to be going down. That's what I'd be looking for. Because if we go back to another daily lower low, back, back below 533, we're going to be in a monthly fail breakout. And that pattern is so, so, so important because the expansion can literally only continue into the later part of this month or beyond, meaning broader participation, if we hold that high. Otherwise, that is resistance. And if we sell off a of resistance, that's really important. All right, click the video on the left or click on the right if you want to uh, subscribe and hang out with me at 9.15 a.m. tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in.